This episode is brought to you by Private Internet Access. Sign up using the link in the description and get 83% off for two years and four extra free months, which come up to just $2 a month. During autumn in 1964, the Air Force commences trials on a revolutionary and unconventional device that appears to have originated beyond Earth. This remarkable machine is among the swiftest aircraft ever to take flight, a colossal intercontinental bomber capable of surpassing the speed of any fighter jet. This groundbreaking aircraft is so extraordinary that it harnesses and rides its own supersonic shockwave. It was envisioned to become the future backbone of America's bomber force. However, the journey to develop such an advanced aircraft would be overshadowed by a tragic turn of events. By the mid-1950s, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union had escalated to an unprecedented level. Each side possessed strategic bombers capable of flying extensive distances to engage targets deep within enemy territory. The United States had successfully developed a cutting-edge, all-jet bomber fleet. The recently introduced B-52 aircraft had the capability to carry substantial payloads over vast distances while the forthcoming B-58 would soon achieve supersonic speeds, further enhancing its capabilities. However, in a full-scale conflict, neither of these aircraft would prove sufficient against Soviet air defences. Although the B-52 had the range to reach the Soviet Union, its slower speed left it vulnerable against the advanced generation of Soviet interceptors. On the other hand, while the supersonic B-58 could match the speed of interceptors, it had limitations in terms of range and payload capacity. The Air Force had an urgent requirement for a novel aircraft, a heavy bomber that could surpass any Soviet threats with its exceptional speed. However, in 1955, there were significant doubts regarding the feasibility of such a plane. It would necessitate exploring unconventional approaches, such as employing nuclear power to extend the aircraft's range or utilizing exotic high-energy fuels to enhance the performance of jet engines. These radical solutions were considered necessary to meet the desired capabilities. The most pragmatic approach appeared to involve designing an aircraft that would predominantly fly at subsonic speeds for most of its journey towards a target. However, upon nearing the target, the aircraft would discard the outer sections of its wings and fuel tanks, enabling it to execute a supersonic dash. This concept allowed for a combination of efficient subsonic flight and high-speed maneuverability when needed. During the 1950s, aviation technology advanced rapidly, with notable strides made in aerodynamics, engine performance and the development of exotic materials. As a result, the initial concept of the supersonic dash could be set aside in favour of a new design approach. This revised approach involved creating an aircraft that could sustain supersonic speeds throughout its entire mission, eliminating the need for a transition from subsonic to supersonic flight. The swift progress in aviation technology allowed for this shift in design strategy. In 1957, the Air Force initiated the development of a next-generation bomber with ambitious performance targets. The envisioned aircraft had to surpass the B-52 by flying at a speed exceeding three times that of the B-52, reaching altitudes of 25,000 feet higher, while still maintaining a comparable payload capacity and range. These performance requirements set high benchmarks for the new bomber's capabilities and represented a significant leap forward in aircraft technology. Boeing and North American Aviation, two prominent aircraft manufacturers, were invited to compete in designing the next-generation bomber. Both companies presented radical concepts that shared superficial similarities. Each design incorporated canards, small forewings, and slender delta wings, which were optimized for supersonic flight. However, Boeing was widely anticipated to emerge as the frontrunner and secure the winning bid, due to various factors such as its reputation, expertise, and previous successes in the field of aviation. Indeed, Boeing had a distinguished track record with the successful production of the renowned B-52 bomber and a series of iconic bombers during World War II. In contrast, North American aviation was considered the underdog in this competition. However, a significant turning point occurred during North American's development phase when their engineers came across a crucial research report. 
This report revealed a relatively unknown phenomenon called compression lift, which would grant them a substantial advantage in the design process. The discovery of compression lift provided North America with a newfound opportunity to innovate and potentially surpass Boeing in the competition. While aircraft usually produce shock waves that propagate away from them when flying faster than the speed of sound, by redirecting these shock waves underneath the wings, they could harness their energy to generate additional lift. Leveraging this principle, North American's design offered the promise of enhanced efficiency during high supersonic speeds. The Air Force was highly impressed by this innovative approach, recognizing the potential advantages it could bring to the next generation bomber's performance. To the surprise of Boeing, in 1957, North America's design was chosen for further development. The newly selected bomber was named the Valkyrie and designated as the B-70. Engineers employed state-of-the-art technologies to construct a remarkable 260-ton bomber that had the capability to outpace fighter jets. This groundbreaking aircraft represented a significant advancement in aviation and showcased the ingenuity and determination of North American's engineers. In order to achieve this remarkable accomplishment, the Valkyrie was equipped with six afterburning turbojet engines, which drew in air through a sophisticated intake system. These engines were specifically optimized to operate with utmost efficiency at high supersonic speeds. Their power was substantial enough that even in the event of one engine failure, the Valkyrie could maintain a speed of Mach 3 and still successfully fulfill its mission. The redundancy and performance capabilities of the Valkyrie's engines ensured its resilience and reliability in demanding operational conditions. Indeed, clever aerodynamic design played a vital role in the Valkyrie's exceptional performance. The utilization of compression lift granted the aircraft one of the highest lift-to-drag ratios among all manned aircraft. The incorporation of variable geometry wings further improved stability and augmented compression lift. During takeoff and landing, the wings could be fully extended to maximize lift and maneuverability in critical phases of flight. These aerodynamic features optimized the Valkyrie's efficiency, allowing it to achieve superior performance and maneuverability across a range of flight conditions. At low supersonic speeds, the Valkyrie's variable geometry wings could be angled downwards by 25 degrees, while at high multi-max speeds, they could be extended to a full 65 degree sweep. However, flying at three times the speed of sound presented a significant challenge in terms of the intense kinetic heating that would affect the airframe. The extreme temperatures would cause conventional aircraft aluminium to soften. To address this issue, engineers developed a revolutionary fuselage skin that could withstand the thermal stresses encountered during high-speed flight. Additionally, a unique cooling system was implemented where fuel was circulated throughout the airframe to dissipate heat and maintain a manageable temperature inside the aircraft's interior. These innovative solutions ensured the structural integrity and operational capability of the Valkyrie under extreme thermal conditions. Despite flying at an altitude of 75,000 feet, the Valkyrie's cockpit was completely pressurized, ensuring a comfortable environment for the crew. The aircraft also incorporated an innovative encapsulated escape system providing added safety measures. This design feature eliminated the need for bulky flight suits, allowing the Valkyrie's crew of four to get airborne in just 20 minutes. With its impressive capabilities, including the ability to deliver a nuclear payload to any location worldwide within a matter of hours, the Valkyrie's performance was truly extraordinary and surpassed the boundaries of conventional aircraft capabilities. The bomber was designed to embody America's strategy of deterrence through strength reflecting the nation's commitment to maintaining a formidable military presence. The unveiling of the first experimental XB-70 prototype took place in May 1964, with flight testing scheduled to commence shortly thereafter. Additionally, construction was already underway for a second and third prototype. However, from the outset, it became evident that the development process would not proceed as smoothly as anticipated. During initial ground tests, a plethora of technical problems arose, causing significant delays in the maiden flight as engineers diligently worked through a long list of issues that needed to be addressed. The challenges encountered during the early stages posed significant hurdles that had to be overcome before the Valkyrie could proceed with its flight testing program. After numerous delays, 
the XB-70 was finally deemed ready for its inaugural flight on September 21st. The momentous occasion was met with cheers, as the futuristic bomber took off for the first time. However, the celebrations were short-lived. A hydraulic leak occurred, preventing the landing gear from attracting as intended. Furthermore, one of the engines experienced a surge, necessitating an emergency shutdown. These unexpected technical issues forced the flight to be cut short and required further troubleshooting and rectification before the Valkyrie could resume its flight testing program. Upon the prototype's return for landing, an additional issue arose as one of the brakes locked up, resulting in a tire blowout and subsequent fire. It appeared that as one problem was resolved, new challenges would emerge. On October 12th, the XB-70 achieved its first supersonic flight, barely surpassing Mach 1. However, as flight tests progressed, a peculiar problem arose. The paint on the fuselage and control surfaces started peeling off, leaving the aircraft with an appearance resembling that of having been subjected to a sandblasting effect. This unexpected paint degradation posed a concern that needed to be addressed to ensure the longevity and aesthetics of the Valkyrie's airframe. Despite efforts to patch up the paint, the XB-70 continued its test flights, gradually pushing for higher speeds. However, it appeared that as the aircraft flew faster, more severe issues arose. On its 12th test flight, as the prototype reached a speed of Mach 2.6, a critical incident occurred. The horizontal splitter, a crucial component of the aircraft, tore off and was subsequently sucked into the engine duct, causing damage to four engines. Although the pilots managed to land the aircraft safely, the damage was significant, resulting in the replacement of all four engines. This incident highlighted the challenges and risks involved in pushing the limits of the Valkyrie's capabilities and underscored the need for careful evaluation and improvement in the design and performance of the aircraft. After enduring a series of setbacks and technical challenges, the XB-70 was finally given clearance to reach Mach 3 on October 14th. However, just two minutes into the flight, a significant portion of the wing's leading edge broke off, necessitating another emergency landing. Subsequently, the first prototype was restricted to flying at a maximum speed of Mach 2.5. While setbacks were expected in the development of such an advanced aircraft, there was a larger problem looming over the program, waiting to be addressed. Right from the beginning, there were legitimate concerns regarding the Valkyrie's ability to evade Soviet air defences effectively. The introduction of surface-to-air missiles SAMs, in the mid-1950s had rapidly emerged as a highly effective means of safeguarding airspace. By the 1960s, the Soviet Union possessed thousands of these missiles, which had the capability to target aircraft at altitudes surpassing even that of the XB-70. Given the prevalence and effectiveness of these advanced SAM systems, Doubts persisted as to whether the Valkyrie could truly evade and overcome such formidable air defences. The advent of Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, in the late 1950s revolutionised the delivery of nuclear warheads by offering a faster and more cost-effective means. Within a short period, missile technology had rendered even the most advanced bomber, such as the XB-70, practically obsolete in terms of its strategic value. Faced with the diminishing relevance of the Valkyrie, engineers were compelled to urgently explore options to keep the aircraft viable and find ways to adapt its role to changing military dynamics and technological advancements. The need to maintain the aircraft's relevance prompted a race against time for engineers to identify strategies that would ensure the XB-70 remained valuable in an evolving defence landscape. In an attempt to find alternative roles for the Valkyrie, engineers explored radical concepts such as transforming it into a missile launcher, an aerial launch platform for spacecraft, a supersonic aerial refueler, or even a Mach 3 supersonic transport. However, these ambitious ideas ultimately proved to be unfeasible. As a result, the program underwent significant downsizing, eventually being reduced to a minimal research project involving only two aircraft. The original grand vision for the Valkyrie was scaled back drastically, and the focus shifted towards limited research and experimentation rather than pursuing the wide-ranging and ambitious operational capabilities initially envisioned. Despite the challenges and setbacks, the Valkyrie program persevered, 
driven by the significant investment already made in its development. In 1966, NASA joined forces with the Air Force to collaborate on flight testing, leveraging the prototypes to gather valuable research on supersonic flight. By this stage, the second prototype had demonstrated superior capabilities compared to its predecessor. On May 19, 1966, it achieved speeds exceeding Mach 3, showcasing its ability to sustain a cruising speed three times faster than the speed of sound for over 30 minutes. This achievement validated the aircraft's performance potential and marked a notable milestone in the flight testing program. After almost a decade of development, the Valkyrie, one of the most ambitious aircraft in the world, was finally demonstrating its expected capabilities. However, tragedy struck just weeks later. On June 8th, during a formation flight for a photo opportunity, the second prototype of the Valkyrie was accompanied by four other aircraft. Tragically, without any prior warning, one of the trailing aircraft collided with the XB-70, resulting in its immediate destruction and causing severe damage to the Valkyrie's vertical stabilizers. This devastating incident not only led to the loss of an aircraft, but also dealt a significant blow to the Valkyrie program. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, the Valkyrie remained airborne for a mere 16 seconds in a straight and level flight before spiraling back to the Earth. This catastrophic accident resulted in the tragic loss of two test pilots and a billion-dollar aircraft. The incident dealt a devastating blow to the Valkyrie program, compelling NASA and the Air Force to carry on their research with the remaining, less capable original prototype. The XB-70, despite never becoming a part of America's bomber force, stood as an engineering marvel. Its existence and development had a profound impact on the Cold War, showcasing the technological prowess and aspirations of the United States during that era. In the 40s and 50s, wars were fought with guns, planes and bombs. But today's warfare is cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. But you can stay safe by securing your personal connection and data with private internet access. It literally hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection. This way, it shields your digital life from the eyes of your internet service provider, network administrators, and government sensors, so you can enjoy a secure and private internet experience. Also, PIA has servers in more than 83 countries and in every US state, so you can say goodbye to geoblocks and hello to endless possibilities. Private Internet Access is the world's most transparent VPN provider, with a restrict no-log policy that was verified in court and by an independent audit. PIA VPN is available for all platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and you can use one Private Internet Access subscription to protect an unlimited number of devices at the same time. And guess what? PIA has an amazing offer exclusively for you. Get a mind-blowing 83% off for two years, plus an extra four months free. That's just $2.03 a month. Signing up is risk-free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, and 24-7 customer support is available. Click the link in the description to redeem your key and experience the power of private internet access for yourself.